Welcome. This is the fourth lecture in the Big History 2020 series. In this presentation, I'm to, going to uh, provide you evidences of the expansion of our universe. Obviously, what we can do is uh, have obs observational evidences. We look at what we can see and then uh, try to interpret that from uh, the evidence. In order to understand that, I need to explain what is Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is the change in frequency of a wave in relation to an observer who is moving relative to the wave source. A common example is, of course, the pitch changed when a vehicle is sounding a horn, approaches, and then we cease from an observer. I'm going to show you a, a movie here. This movie is not the same as the one I show in class because um, the one there isn't from a Creative Commons license. So I might, if I include it here, I might violate somebody else's license. So the video that's going to show to you now is from a creative license and the link is shown on the screen at the moment. So let's hear what is a Doppler effect in sound. Have, have you ever wondered what causes the siren of a speeding ambulance to seemingly change pitch as it zooms by you on the street? Actually, there is no change in pitch of the siren itself. What you are experiencing is a perceived sound shift due to a phenomenon known as the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is defined as the apparent change in frequency of a wave caused by the relative motion between the wave's source and the observer. The Doppler effect can be observed with any wave-producing source, waves of water created by a bobbing bug moving across the surface of a pond, or sound waves of a siren from an approaching ambulance. The Doppler phenomenon occurs when the object emitting waves moves toward or away from a fixed point or an observer. In front of the object, the waves are compressed. Behind it, the waves are spread out. Let's look at the Doppler effect as it relates to the sound waves produced by the siren of a moving ambulance. A stationary ambulance produces a consistent siren at a steady pitch. The sound waves are uniform from all sides of the siren. As the ambulance moves forward, it continues to produce a uniform sound wave, yet the sound waves in front of it start to bunch up, increasing the wave's frequency. To an observer, the siren of the oncoming ambulance is perceived at a higher pitch. As the ambulance passes by and moves away, the sound waves of the siren are stretched out. Thus, the frequency of the wave is diminished, resulting in a perceived lowering of the pitch from the observer's point of view. The observed effect is that when the ambulance approaches and then departs, an observer will hear the siren shift from a high pitch to a low pitch. So this is the Doppler effect. And Doppler effect applies to all waves. And light is also a wave, and therefore we should expect Doppler effect applicable in light. In fact, it has been demonstrated in our daily lives of this thing. Um, the police will use a Doppler effect uh, radar to test the speed of your car, and if you are over speeding, they can issue you a fine. The method is exactly Doppler effect. So Doppler effect is both available in sound, in water waves, and in light as well. 
in physics, we well, we also have something called redshift. Redshifts refer to uh, the lights coming from the stars. The lines there looks like shifted towards the red, and therefore it's known as redshift. What does it mean? It means that the frequency that we observe compared to the frequency that we can observe on Earth has been shifted towards the red or has shifted lower in pitch if we are talking about sun. And therefore, we, we know that that means that the source of that light is moving away from us. So that is the red shift. Now, when we talk about the red shift, we are looking at it's not actually the bright light, but rather is the dark line there. So these lines are known as spectrums. The spectrum can be matched with the spectrums we can discover on Earth here. Usually for a spectrum on Earth, we will use a, a bright spectrum. That means we have the source of the elements from that, uh, which produce a spectrum by exciting the elements. For example, heating it up, then you will start radiating its light in, the, in its own spectrum. And therefore the spectra are all represented by bright lights. But when we are looking at the lights coming from, say, a star, we find that there are black lines there instead of bright lines. So what does that mean? Well, when light coming out from the, from the star, for whatever reason, okay, coming from the star, the light can strike on an element, an atom. The atom absorbs the light and therefore is electrons jumps to another orbit. When the electrons get back to its ground state, emitting out that light, it may emit the light in any direction. And therefore, when we are looking at one star, the light is coming from the star into our direction. But when it is being absorbed, that light will be emitted in other directions, not necessarily towards us and hence we won't see that light. And therefore, when we are observing the star and look at the spectrums, they are absorption spectrums. Absorption spectrum means they are, um, they are uh, black instead of bright. Okay, so we know that uh, when it shifts towards the red, that means it is uh, moving away from us. So there are three, three different possible uh, reasons why we will observe red shifts. Now, uh, for most of the star we can observe on Earth, they all, almost all, demonstrate red shifts. So the three possible reasons is, first of all, the object is moving away from us, is Doppler effect. Or the second possibility is the space itself is expanding, causing the objects to become separated without changing their positions in space. This is also known as the cosmological redshift. And thirdly, there will be gravitational redshift, which is a relativistic effect. Now, in order to understand this, we have to think about, is there a way for us to uh, find out what is the difference between a simple Doppler effect or and and the space expanding, what will be the difference? If we're looking at a explosion, every star is moving away from us. Then we expect them to move away from us with the same speed, and therefore they should produce the same red shift. But if the space itself is expanding, then it is another story. When the space is expanding, that means any object will the space the speed of uh of moving away from us will be dependent on its distance. So let's look at some uh 
possible method of measuring distance first. When we are trying to measure distance, obviously for stars, we cannot uh, take our ruler there and measure its distance. So we have to use other methods. Now, there are two methods that usually you, we can use. Now, the first method is called parallax. Parallax means you are moving your head around, uh, moving your observation points relative to a fixed point. Here we have the fixed point, the nearest star. Okay, this is the thing. We can, if we can move our head a little bit in the different directions, then we should see the distance uh, stars move in a relative to this fixed star. So this is the way we try to measure a uh, distance. The maximum distance we can uh, move our head uh, on Earth is one year. When Earth moves around the Sun in one in half a year, it will move to the other end of the diameter of the present. So, we if we observe the same um, sky, find a uh, fixed star and then look at the relative positions between the other star against this one, then we can calculate the distance in terms of the radius of our orbit around the sun, uh, the radius called an uh, astronomical unit, AU. So one AU is the radius of the orbit Earth is moving around the sun. And we use uh, Parallax second as a unit. Parallax second, the second here represents the angle, not time. So one complete circle is 360 degrees. Each degree is divided into 60 minutes, and each minute is divided into 60 seconds. So one para uh, second means there will be a angle of 1 over 3,600. So what is the exact distance? The exact distance is about 3.26 light years. That means for an object, the light coming from that point to us will take 3.26 years. Okay, now being able to measure distance and being able to measure um, the speed that particular star is moving from us, then we can come to this Hubble's law. For objects which are further away, more than 10 mega uh, parsecs away from us, we will be able to find red ships. These red ships can be using the Doppler effect uh, formulas to calculate what's the velocity it is moving away from us. So this is usually represented in a diagram. Here is one of these diagrams. The distances is in uh, mega par set. You will see that there is a, a particular um, cluster of uh, data points, which is circled in, uh, in a ellipse here, in the blue background. They all represent one cluster, and within that cluster, the like the stars are spinning against each other, and therefore some of them is spinning towards us, and some is spinning away from us, and therefore we can see different relative uh, speed that represent. But in general, we find that most of the uh, uh, stars more than 10 mega uh, parsec, they are all lying in this linear scale. It's almost one straight line. How do we interpret this? Okay. Um, the white box represent the original state and the blue represent the state after, 
a little bit later on. Now, if the uh, space is expanding, we can think about it like we have a a, a flower doll, and then we put in some um, is that called enzymes, so that it will be it will expand by time. So the whole um, doll flower doll will expand. So this expansion. Uh, within this flower though, you put some some seeds in. For example, you put some um, black sesame seeds. They are all well mixed. So that's the initial stage represented by each of these white dogs. After a while, the whole doll had expanded. So they come to these uh, blue positions. Now let's look at two possible uh, positions. One is the yellow. The other one is the red. For the yellow, looking down a little bit, the uh, third row, the yellow is, is us. So we do not observe, we moving. But from our perspective, the more distance, more further away from us, the seeds, the, the sesame seeds, the further they seem to move away. That means in the same amount of time, those lights coming from nearby stars seems to have moved less than the light that's coming from further apart. And therefore, when we talk about this uh, space expansion, then it is not about the objects themselves moving. It's about the whole dimension itself moving. It's the space itself moving, just like a dough of flour, and the whole dough is expanding. The same thing can be done with the red dots there. If we take the red dots as us, then we observe the same effect. And here comes in one of the conclusion of this observation. Is called the cosmological principle. Uh, there are two uh, two parts of this principle. The first part is actually the universe looks like the same in every direction. The universe is smooth, but unfortunately, at our time, at this time, when we look at our sky, we don't see a even distribution of stars in our in our sky at night. So it is. it doesn't look like smooth. So what does it mean? Okay, this question will be answered later on in future um, uh, lectures. But we just keep in mind that, that we are now having one principle without evidence at the moment. That is, the universe looks the same in all directions. Okay, so that is something we need to show you evidence a bit later on. The next one is the Copernican principle, uh, meaning that there's no uh, middle, no middle point in the universe. There, the whole universe, you can take any point as the starting point, or no point is the starting point. That's like um, Earth is not center of the universe. The sun is also not the center of the universe, or even our Milky Way is not the center of the universe. You can take any point, any star as the center of the universe, like the uh, like this uh, diagram which have, we have shown earlier. You can take the yellow dot, you can take the red dot, it will look the same. If you look at the result from the yellow dot's point of view or from the red dot point of view. Another interesting thing is if we are trying to observe our universe in some points then if the separation of space between us at that at that and that star is faster than the velocity of light then light can never come to us. So we have the concept of a so-called observable universe. 
the universe that we can observe is limited by the velocity of light. If light cannot travel to us, we can never see it. So that will be our limit. Here is just a um, early um, evidence. Okay, uh, we will talk about this a bit later on. So uh, this is one evidence I haven't got the time to discuss in this particular lecture, but we will do that later on. Again, we would we have so shown you that uh, you. Whether you are in the yellow dots or red dots, they are look the same. Okay, so the idea here is, is now that the star themselves or any observ observable stars in the universe is not moving; it is the space itself expanding. Therefore, it is not limited by Albert Einstein's uh, limit to the velocity of any matter. Matter cannot travel faster than light, but space expansion can appear can appear to be faster than light because it depends on how far away you are from that particular star. The accumulated distance for that expansion may exceed the speed the light can uh, reach us. So. This is a very difficult concept to to uh, to understand, but please just uh, just uh, accept that um, in our universe, the whole universe expands, and we are not able to see the edge of this universe, and we will never know what the universe is expanding into, because that is not a valid scientific question. Scientific questions can only be answered if the question is observable. Or well, later on, if something enables humans to be able to observe, then it will be another matter. But at the moment, all the observation we can do on about the universe is from the light coming from different parts of the universe, and the speed of light is limited by its maximum velocity velocity of light is fixed you cannot that cannot be changed with that in mind that means whatever we can observe is due to this uh, space expansion and when the space expand to a certain part then we will no longer be able to observe the universe so it is this a uh, scale of space itself changes. It's not uh, the 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 stars moving away. So this is a different concept here. So hopefully you can you will put some time thinking about uh, the expansion of space rather than the stars moving away from us. Uh, imagine that you are inside a boat, a, a dough of flour. And the flower is expanding, and you when you look around yourself, you look, you see that all other seeds within the door is also moving away from you, and the further away from you, the faster it seems to move. So that is the whole whole idea of this expanding universe. We will talk about something else next lecture, and thank you for your time. Bye bye.